Hello, 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 and welcome to a new video. Today, we are going to Amish country. We have left Washington, D.C., and we're now driving up and through the middle of Pennsylvania. Not the middle, somewhere in Pennsylvania, where I'm told there's lots of Amish people. We are going close to a town called Lancaster, a city called Lancaster, which is apparently right in the middle of Dutch Pennsylvania territory where Amish people live. Now, I'm not going on some kind of crazy Amish tour because I'm not sure if that's even appropriate or whatever but somebody did tell us about a really good restaurant which is in this area it's called something maple shady maple it's called shady maples smorgasbord I have no idea what to expect from this place but we're going there to eat some food for, for lunch as it's kind of like it was not halfway but it's a bit off the track but it's on the route back from Washington DC to Philadelphia where we're going tonight and I thought it'd be a good opportunity for us to kind of see a little bit of this place this land around where the Amish people live and maybe even try some of their food so let's go I'm excited Tech are you excited yes I want all the pastries all the pastries we're going to be there in about 30 minutes we've been driving for two hours already so almost there As we're getting closer and closer to this restaurant, the roads are getting smaller, it's getting more rural, the houses are getting more traditional. I'm seeing a lot more kind of Dutchy names. Like we are about to go into a place quite soon, I think, called Efrata, spelt with a PH. No idea what to expect. This is something I've only seen on TV. And I can't believe we're actually here. All right, we've arrived and we saw, as we were driving along, some Amish people. Obviously, I'm not gonna take some photos and videos of them because it's not a safari, right? But we're at this place here, apparently, and this one of my viewers actually recommended this place to us. Shady Maples, Smorgasbord. Tekka made an interesting observation as we passed because it is huge. What did you say? <laughs> it looks like a Bucky's. It's like a- So it's, it's like, like a-, a Amish people. Let's go inside and have a look. Well, whatever this place is, it is massive. The buffet here is next level huge. It's not like this building is massive and it, it stretches the whole length of the place. I'm a bit intimidated to be honest. So we're gonna go up. Pork. Oh, fried chicken. Fried chicken, oh, ham balls, oh, duck. That's, that's cake, that way. Oh my god, look at the size of the place. Salad here. Oh my. I've got my plate. I think my favourite, this is my second round, right? We've got mac and cheese there. The best there, right in the front, is the shrimp and grits. Got some noodles and I've got a big dollop of fried chicken. I had the healthy stuff the first time round, like the salads get that out of the way early. Second round is all about the good stuff. Right, Mark? Oh, you're over here. Oh, I'm walking over here. Mmm. I take. But I'm back here at the 
size of that. And there's like a custard biscuit. Oh, you're gonna like this biscuit thing. Well, that was an experience. Not sure if that's what I expected or not. I think it definitely wasn't what I expected. It was like a kind of glorified garden center that we have in the UK. Uh, kind of like a, like a Toby's garden center. Also maybe like a Tor Toby's Carvery that we have in the UK where it serves like kind of Sunday roast buffet style. Very similar and very similar audience and clientele as well. Not what I expected. The food was okay, not too bad for a buffet. That's actually better than the type of places we have like that in the UK. And actually it was really cheap as well. It was like 20 quid each, $20 each, which in the UK would be considered very expensive. But here, from what I've seen so far in the States, it's very cheap. Anyway, we need to race back to Philadelphia now because I need to hand this hard car back before I get fined an extra day. All right, we have arrived for the first time in Philadelphia. And as it happens by coincidence, we didn't know this, we didn't plan this. We're staying right in the very heart of the center city, the old town, the oldest part of the town, very close to all the historic places here in Philadelphia, which we will be exploring over the next two or three days in these videos. The place where the US constitution was signed, for example. Anyway, we've not got time to see any of that tonight because we were quite tired as we arrived after that trip to Amish country. And I should say about that trip, we were really in a rush because we had to give the hire car back at a certain time and we were late. Um, and so we didn't get to spend enough time there, which is a shame. I would really love to learn more about Amish culture. I know that they are you know, really hardworking, honest people. And I would have liked to have like learned more about them. We're just not gonna have time on this trip. There's too much to see and do. So the next few days, we're gonna be here in Philadelphia and right now, there's actually nothing open here in the central part of town. But there is and should be a steak, a cheese steak place open where we can get some meat. I'm hoping, according to Google Maps. So that's what we're doing right now. We're gonna get a cheese steak, my very first cheese steak ever. I had one in Chicago. No, it's not the same. It's not gonna be the same. Not the same. There's lots of cheese steak places here in Philadelphia and everybody has their opinions about what are the best ones you know I've been re researching a lot I've been researching this a lot on YouTube and people have got a lot of opinions about the best places and tonight we're not going to be able to see like the best of the best because well we're just it's too late in the night but um there is one or two places that are quite highly rated just about two or three blocks from where we're staying so we're walking around now and we're going to stick that is the goal let's see hopefully they're still open as you can see, there's not a single person here. And I've got my big jacket on for the first time on this trip because it is four degrees Celsius, which is just a few degrees above freezing. Uh, it feels freezing. But uh, yeah, very quiet in the streets here. Bit apprehensive. Come to a city I've never been to before. We're walking around the streets and they're deserted. Oh, I'm right in there. Yeah, yeah, 
my god. Mm. There's a little bit of meat coming out of that. So? Good. <laughs> Meaty. Cheesy. Greasy. Greasy. <laughs> that right. Also, in the States, the other thing I just get on board with very heavily is the fact that your soft drinks has full sugar. I'm just going off her stuff, that's all. Mm. I don't know if there's aspartame in there, but there's not much. So that cheese stick was pretty good. Thing is, because I've never had a proper one from here in Philadelphia before, I've got no frame of reference to say whether it was good compared to the other ones or not. So yeah, my review of my first ever cheese stick was I liked it. It was very good. Tekka didn't like her so much because she got the wrong cheese. I got the, the Swizz, I think they call it, which is like squeezy soft cheese. It's just Whiz. Whiz is what it's called. Tekka got like provolone or something, which is not the right way to do it. It was nice though, I just thought it was a bit, it could be more salty. We did get some stuff now, some chocolate because we feel like we need something sweet now from the 7-Eleven over there. And it just so happens, and this is literally a block from where we're staying, this here behind me, is the Betsy Ross house. Now, I didn't know about this story, but I read about it earlier. Betsy Ross, sure. the legend, the myth, the legend, I don't know if it's true or not. But it said that she created the first ever Stars and Stripes American flag. And it says up there on a sign, look. Up there behind me. Betsy Ross, 1752 to 1836. Credited with making the first ever, or stitching and handmade, the first ever Stars and Stripes flag. Well, that's pretty cool, cool bit of history. And it looks like there's a museum attached to the house here, so uh, I might need to come back here and check it out properly. But that is a really cool part of Philly history right here next to where we are staying but it's now late we've had a long day of driving and all that i don't think i filmed that much today but it was a travel day i think i managed to get some footage out of it which is better than nothing and thank you for following on with this whole adventure and all these journeys great to speak to you as always and until the next adventure have a good night morning evening afternoon or whatever time of day it is wherever you are in the world take care